Thor News presents Big Giant Sunspot AR-1785 and a large array of sunspots. All right, ladies and gentlemen, yeah, it is true from spaceweather.com. They have informed us that we do have a lot of sunspots of a differentiating variety, and we have a giant sunspot, AR-1785. Give you a quick look at the Earth in relation to the size of the sunspots, because as you should know, the sun is much, 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 much larger than the Earth. AR-1785 is emerging from the sun's south eastern limb. It does have a beta gamma delta. Can I help you, help you, help you? Man, if I was going to join a fraternity, that would be the fraternity to join. AR-1785 does have a beta gamma delta magnetic field that does harbor energy for a powerful X-class solar flare or solar flares. Now, we did have three X-class flares a couple months ago. They weren't Earth-facing. This one will be turning towards Earth in the next few days, so we'll have, we'll have to keep an eye on it. Now, technically, a giant sun flare wouldn't really hurt anybody on Earth. Like, a giant X-class flare that shot out to Earth wouldn't hurt anybody. Though, it would totally fry all of our electronic equipment. So, like, everybody moving away from books and putting it on there, like, their Kindle or their computer or their phones or whatever, all that would be fried and gone. Yeah, uh, we'd basically be powerless, sent back to the Stone Age, which I'm sure would be a very horrible and troubling time, since we haven't prepared for it. Uh, the world has a tendency to spend trillions of dollars trying to blow itself up instead of doing the precautionary measures to avoid situations like this. You would think that you could harness the energy of coronal mass ejections and turn that into energy, but I'm pretty sure we're going to stick with oil until the planet runs out of oil. And I wonder what happens on the day when we suck every drop of oil out of the planet. I bet bad things. And there's another active region trailing behind it, which is AR-1787. It is only slightly less potent, with a magnetic field capable of M-class eruptions. These sunspots are a sign that the sun's southern hemisphere is waking up. The south has been lagging behind until now. June brought a surge in southern sunspots, and the trend is continuing in July. This southern awakening could herald a double-peaked solar maximum due in late 2013, early 2014. Ooh, double-peaked solar maximum. That sounds awesome. I gave one of my ex-girlfriends a double-peaked solar maximum once. She really enjoyed it. That was dumb. All right, so yeah, solar maximum was supposed to start at the beginning of 2013, but NASA has said that unexpected things have been happening in the sun. And this solar awakening could herald a double peak solar maximum due in late 2013, early 2014, or as I would call it, the exact timeline of the arrival of Comet C-2012 S1 Ison. It's a, it's a comet. Could be common century, could be total dud, could be wormwood. I don't know if you heard of it. I've got, I've got a series on it. So yeah, we'll keep an eye on this giant sunspot the one behind it, they will be facing towards Earth. Now, the coronal action towards Earth has been totally dormant for a long time. That could change at any moment. Life in the universe is like that. Change is the only constant we have. So I thought I'd give you some pretty pictures, keep you updated, uh, and keep an eye out. So, and a lot of times you can just look at the sun, and if it's giant and flaring, you can be like, oh my god, that's the CME, and then you can run home and check Artis, A-R-T-I-S, at Solar IMG and see if you're right or not. It's kind of a fun little game I'll play, and it's free. All right, God bless everybody, and uh, continue to have a good weekend. All right, later. Beta Gamma Delta, can I help you, help you, help you?